These are my top 14 Microsoft Excel tips and shortcuts. Now, these are the first seven that we're gonna cover in this video, and this is a two-part video. I'm also gonna give you a brief introduction of how I came up with these and in the context in which I used them. So if you wanna skip the introduction, just go straight to the timestamp, fast forward to go to the tip of your choice or to go to tip number one. Anyway, I'm Hector Garcia, I'm an accountant, and I've been using Microsoft Excel for 20 years. I compiled this list because it's at the top 14 things that I use the most. It's important to mention that pivot tables and VLOOKUP, which are the two most popular functions in Excel, have been purposely left out of these top 14 because I have a separate tutorial just on that. So check out the description and you can click uh, click in that to go straight to that tutorial. Anyway, uh, this is really a brief summarized version of a full course I teach to accountants, Microsoft Excel for accountants. And if you are interested in joining that course, just look at the description below. Anyway, let's go straight to tip number one. The first tip is select data range and filter. So let's say for example, we have a data set like this. What we wanna do is select the entire data range that has information. So what most people do is they'll select the first cell and then sort of click and drag and go all the way down to the last cell or maybe they'll use a shortcut like clicking on the first cell, clicking Control Shift right arrow and then holding Control Shift and clicking Control Shift down arrow. That will select the entire data set. However, the quickest and fastest way to select the data set is to hit Control A. Control A will select the entire data set just like Control Shift right arrow and Control Shift left arrow would have done. The next step is to do a filter. There's two ways to do a filter. One, we can click on data and then on filter or we can hit the shortcut which is Control Shift L. So Control Shift L will automatically enable filters. What's great about filters is that I can click on any of my headers and I can select specific data sets or specific dates, assuming this is transaction data. I can pick specific uh, fields in here. I can also sort them by clicking on sort A through Z and Z through A. So a filter quickly allows you to uh, filter the data and then sort it. Tip number two is auto sum and subtotal. So let's say for example, I have a data set and one of my columns has a numerical or a dollar value and I want to know the sum or the addition of all those uh, numbers in that column. So typically what I'll do is hit control end or something like that to take me all the way to the very last row that has data. And then in here, I would type something like sum equals sum, open parentheses, select the entire uh, data set and then hit enter. So by doing that, by doing a, a regular sum formula, I'll be able to get the total of that column. So that works really, really well. Now, so tip number one in here would be don't type the sum formula. Instead, just type alt equals on your keyboard. Alt equals will automatically apply the sum formula so you don't have to select the data set. Press enter, that's perfect. Now, the additional challenge to this is if I filter this data, this number is not going to change. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this number by hitting control X going all the way to the top. I'm gonna to paste it somewhere around here and I'm gonna make it uh, bold and yellow so you can kinda of focus on that result that's over here. So what would happen if I select this data set, hit Control A and then Control Shift L to do a filter. I would click on category, for example, and I'll select maybe two of these categories and hit OK. So now my data is much shorter. The problem with my sum formula is my sum formula will include filter data. So it won't exclude the filter data, which is typically what we want to do when we do a sum or uh, an addition of a multiple column in combination with a filter. So what you want to do, instead of using sum, what we're going to do is going to come down here and we're going to hit alt equals, but you're going to do it after you did the filter. So if you do an alt equals after you did the filter, Excel will automatically run a subtotal formula instead of a sum formula. And then the subtotal formula will insert a nine here because there's actually different types of subtotals. So a nine basically means that that's going to do a sum. You can actually experiment with the multiple versions of subtotal numbers one through 15. There's different options there. It can do average, it can do min, max, all sorts of statistical options, but nine would be a standard sum. 
So when you run a subtotal like that, I'm going to hit enter here. This number will now be dynamic. I'm going to go ahead and cut this and paste it over this old number that we had. I'll make this bold and yellow real quick so you can see it. So I'm just going to run different filters here. And you will notice that every time I run a filter, this number dynamically changes. Tip number three is relative and absolute references. So for example, let's say I have this data set that contains a whole bunch of invoices and invoices total amounts. If I wanted to multiply that invoice amount by 0.07, for example, I could figure out what the tax amount is if it was 7%. So that's an easy formula, equals D2 times 0.07, hit enter, and that's going to give me the 7% or the tax amount of that invoice. Now, if I select that cell and I click and drag with that little box that you see on the bottom right, and I click that, drag all the way down, you're going to see that the formulas will automatically copy. And as I look and I inspect at each of the formulas, I will notice that, that D2 becomes D3 and D4. And basically, it follows a relative reference relative to copying that formula. Now, the challenge is sometimes is we don't want a relative reference. We actually want an absolute reference. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to figure out the tax amount including uh, a, a change in tax or the tax went to up to 8% or 6%. I wanted to know what the dollar amount is dynamically without having to change the underlying formula. So for that, we're going to do an absolute reference. So instead of putting uh, the heart number in the formula, we're going to delete that. And then we're going to make reference to the actual cell where we actually wrote the tax rate and we'll hit enter. So that's going to give me the same result for the first cell. But once I click and drag this down, I'm going to get a bunch of zeros or a bunch of blanks. Because if I click on any of these formulas, notice that it's looking for a cell relative to the original reference of the first cell that we copied from. So in order to fix this, what we're going to do is we're going to do an absolute reference. The way you do an absolute reference is we simply add a dollar sign to the left of the letter and a dollar sign to the left of the number. Once you do that and you hit enter, and I'm going to do the same thing, select the cell and click and copy that down by the pull handle, copy that down. You will see that now my formula will be dynamic and you see it will always make reference to that absolute cell. Now, what's really nice about this is I could change the tax rate. Let's say I'm going to change it to 9% or 0.9 and the number here dynamically changes. Notice that again, I'm going to put 0.06, hit enter and then the number dynamically changed again. So that's uh, an absolute reference versus a relative reference. Now, one thing that's really important is, let me clear the contents here, is that having to manually add those dollar signs becomes a little bit painful. So there's actually a shortcut for that. So I'm going to select the cell again, and then instead of manually inserting the dollar signs, I'm going to hit F4 on my keyboard. F4 will automatically add the dollar signs, and it's like if I hit F4 one more time, you will add it just to the number one more time, just to the letter one more time, remove the dollar signs one more time. It will add it to both. So that would be an absolute cell reference for copying formulas down. Tip number four is name ranges and tables. This is particularly valuable if you're going to be working with VLOOKUPs or any other sort of lookup type formula that looks at an entire data range that contains multiple rows and multiple columns. It's also really useful to create named tables in order to do pivot tables. Now, we purposely left out VLOOKUPs and pivot tables out of this tutorial because it's going to be a completely separate video that explains those two. Those two happen to be one of the most popular functions, most search functions uh, in Excel. So we're going to leave VLOOKUPs and pivot tables specifically out, but we're going to talk about naming the tables or naming the ranges. So let's say, for example, I have a data set over here. And if I wanted to select uh, the table, select uh, the data range, I hit control A that selects all the all the data. Now here in the top left, there's a name box, I can actually give that table a name. So I'm going to call this table A and I'm no spaces, just give it a name, table A and I'll press enter. Now what's really cool about this is I can have any cell selected I can click on the drop down menu here on the name box, select my new name table A, and I'll automatically go back and select that information. Also, if I was using some sort of formula that would uh, search for information in that table, like a VLOOKUP 
formula, I can actually um, make reference to that table. So instead of having to select a data set and having an actual A1 colon E13 type of uh, array in there, I can just type table A and Excel will actually rec uh, recognize it. It will see it as part of its internal database as the uh, table array. So as we actually uh, move that formula up and down by copying that formula down, we don't have to make those absolute cell references. The naming of the table will automatically assume it's an absolute cell reference and it will make copying your formulas down a lot easier. The alternative to naming the table range is to actually create a data table. So to create a data table, you can actually put your cursor anywhere in the data set and hit Control T on the keyboard. That's going to ask you, hey, would you like to create a data table for this uh, table range? And you hit OK, and it'll automatically make it a table. So a table will give it a name if there isn't a name already. And it'll also use special type of table style formatting that you can change that automatically uh, alternative does alternative shading between the rows to make it a lot easier to look at. It will add the filter automatically, and it will also auto create or expand that table when adjacent information is being added to it. So for example, if I were to type tax here and then hit enter, and then take this number and multiply it times 0 0.07, notice that my formula also changes a little bit. It actually makes reference to the title or to the header, and you will no longer see uh, E2, for example. So once I hit enter, um, Excel knows that a table is supposed to be consistent. So automatically knows that it's going to take that formula and automatically drag it all the way down. Also, if I went to scroll all the way down and I were to add a new entry, for example, notice that as I type the information and I hit enter, it'll, it automatically formatted that table. It ex extended that table one more row and it added the cells with the right formatting, again, assuming that I'm adding more information to that table. So a table uh, automatically names it, does the filters, and formats it in such a way that it understands that that table can grow either down in more rows or sideways with more columns. Tip number five is autofill and flash fill. So we talked about flash fill a little bit uh, earlier in this tutorial. So if I were to run a formula here in this cell, that takes uh, this number here, G2, and then it divides it by F2 and hit Enter. That's going to render a result. If I want to copy that formula all the way down, I can either double click on the little box to the bottom right, double click on that, and that's going to autofill the formula all the way to the next blank row. Or I could also click and drag the box all the way down to wherever I want to end it. Of course, uh, if the formula has any break in numbers, you could get an error over there. Let me delete this row over here. And I'm going to clear the contents in here to show you one more example. So the other way to do it is uh, you do your formula like normal. Hit Enter. Make sure it, the formula is correct. Then you're going to select the original cell, scroll all the way down to the last uh, cell, the blank cell, where you want to copy. Hold the Shift key on your keyboard. And then once you have all the information selected, make sure you click on the formula bar. You can also press F2 if you want to jump to the formula bar, if you want to use the mouse. And then hit Control Enter. Control Enter will do an autofill for you automatically. So there's basically three ways. Uh, double click on the box, click and drag, and the Control Enter. I'm going to show you one more thing, which is actually called Flash Fill. Now, Flash Fill was introduced in Excel 2016. You can see it in 2016, 2019, and any future versions of Excel. And what Flash Fill will do is, is copy non-formula-based patterns. So for example, let's say here in this column I, I wanted to have the city and the state mixed together with a comma. So let me call this city state. And then in the formula bar, I'm going to just type no equals, no formula. I'm just going to type musicville, comma, space, TN, and press enter. So I manually typed. I didn't do any formula, but I typed the exact same information that was on these two cells. What Excel will do with flash fill is it will attempt to copy the same pattern of the information that you put, looking up all the available 
uh, columns inside that row. So I'm going to click down here in the cell right under it, and then I'm going to hit Control E on my keyboard. Control E is the flash fill. So what basically Excel will do is it will find the pattern, notice what you were trying to do, and fill that information based on the non-formula pattern type of information that I was copying into that row. Tip number six is go to special. So what go to special does is allows Excel to select specific cells within a range that have specific formatting. Now, the one that I use all the time is selecting blank cells. So for example, notice that I have three rows here that contain blank cells in this column C. So if I wanted uh, Excel to just select those really, really quick, I would select the entire column by clicking on C, hit Control G or F5. They both give you this go to box. Then we're going to click on special and then under special, we're going to select blanks and then we hit OK. Once we do that, notice that the three cells that had blanks are automatically selected. At this point, I can actually right click and click on delete and then select entire row and then hit enter and it will just get rid of those. Now I'm going to undo this real quick to show you a different uh, idea about this. Now let's say, for example, that these are not together like this, easy to spot. Maybe they're scattered around. So I'm just going to resort this real quick to give it that effect. So I'm going to resort this by, by name and click OK. So now my blanks are scattered around. So that makes it a lot more difficult to find. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to select the entire column, hit Control G or F5, then click on Special, and then click on Blanks, and then click OK. Same thing just happened. Notice that they are selected. They're sort of uh, grayed in. And then what you want to do is you want to come to the formula bar up here and you want to type what you want to replace them with. So for example, if I want to put their uh, famous bill, okay, I'm just typing it in the formula bar and then I hit control enter, really important, control enter, Excel will automatically fill all those empty cells with that information. So selecting blanks to either delete the whole row or to replace the blank with something else is really valuable. Tip number seven is find and replace. So let's say, for example, I have this data set and I have in the state column, and I have some that are abbreviated with two letters and some that are not. So a quick way to fix this, especially if it's not that many uh, problems with it, maybe one or two, is using find and replace. So to open find and replace, we're going to hit control H on the keyboard. That's going to open the find and replace. And then in here, I can literally just type uh, the one that I want to find. So I'm going to put Colorado. If I just click on find all, you're going to see a drop down of every single instance of Colorado. So at this point, I don't have to commit to the replace. And then I'm going to go to replace with and just type CO and then click on replace all. Once I do that, all my Colorados will be replaced with CO. I can do the same thing with California and replace that with CA before I hit replace all. Let me just click on find all so I can get an idea for where they are. And then I click on replace all and that's it. That was part one with the first seven top 14 Excel tips and shortcuts. Make sure to check out the description for part two that contains the next uh, seven out of the 14 shortcuts. We split it into two parts to keep the videos around 20 minutes each, which seems to be the kind of sweet spot in the YouTube world. Anyway, if you like this video, if you enjoyed it, if you learned something from it, make sure you hit subscribe add some comments below. Did I miss anything important? What else would you like to see? And I will be creating more Excel type content. Now, if you're an accounting professional or someone that works mostly with financial accounting type data, I think you will benefit from my advanced Excel course for accountants. Check out the description for that. You will be supporting me, my channel, and hopefully you'll be learning a lot more. All these exercise files are included in the course. So if you take uh, the advanced course, you will have access to all the exercise files, and then you will see some real life examples with actual financial data, bank data, in which I apply all these uh, formulas and tips to, so you can kind of see it all work together. Anyway, thanks for watching, and on to part two.